Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center here in Towson, Maryland. Today's medical tutorial is on gallbladder cancer. Gallbladder cancer obviously involves the uh, gallbladder, so just a quick anatomy lesson like we normally do. This is the liver. And this is the uh, common bile duct. The gallbladder rests in the gallbladder fossa, which is actually a part of the liver. So it's actually the gallbladder is actually attached to the liver. And then it's a, it's also attached to what we call the common bile duct. This is um, and this is the uh, common bile duct. And this is the uh, gallbladder. And today we're going to talk about gallbladder cancers. Um, and gallbladder cancers are cancers that actually uh, arise inside the gallbladder. And these, these types of cancer um, are actually one of the more common cancers in the uh, biliary tract. Unfortunately, um, they're often diagnosed late. Um, and they're not one of the more frequent uh, cancers that we operate on because the majority of the patients are inoperable. But it does involve 2% um, of all cancers. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, females are usually uh, affected more than males. Um, the, these type of cancers kind, uh, tend to uh, be in, more, in the more elderly, beginning in the seventh uh, decade. What are some risk factors for gallbladder cancer? Well, probably in the United States, the most common risk factor is just a history of inflammation from, from gallstones. And up to 90% of people who develop cancer of the gallbladder actually have stones. So the longer that you have stones in place causing chronic inflammation, um, the, uh, the higher the incidence of, uh, of gallbladder cancer. The majority of these cancers are what we call adenocarcinoma, or beginning in, in the glands. Uh, occasionally, we, you will see a squamous cell cancer of the gallbladder, um, but that's uh, few and far between. Now, determining operability and determining um, what type of operation needs to be done uh, in patients with gallbladder is, is part of the initial evaluation. Um, essentially, the gallbladder, uh, let's see if we can draw, just draw a gallbladder here like this. There are several layers lining the gallbladder. So if we were to look at it, There's what we call a mucosal layer, and right under it this, this space here is called the lamina propria. And then there's, there's a muscular layer. And then there's con what we, there's connective tissue, and then the cirro cirrhosis. So let me. Um, so what I did here is I went again just to show that there's mucosal layer, and then one layer deep is what we call the lamina propria, and then there's a, a muscular layer, and then there's connective tissue and a cir cirrhosal layer. So. Um, mucosal or mucosa rather uh, lamina propria uh, muscular and serosal. 
So these gallbladders are staged um, or classified based on the degree of invasion. So if there's a tumor that's just touching or just arising from the mucosa, this ends up being a, um, a T1 lesion. And now if there is a there one if there's one that just goes through the mucosa but is in the lamina propria that actually is a T1A um, and then everything else is either it, it goes T2 to T4 based on um, the degree of depth but, so why is this uh, important well as a surgeon it's important because it, it can po potentially change the operation and also um, from the patient's perspective, gives you an idea of the risk of having uh, disease elsewhere. For example, the deeper these tumors go, the um, the higher the incidence of lymphatic uh, inv inv involvement, and the deeper they go, there's also the higher the incidence of direct extension into the liver bed. So this is a good segue into how we how we treat these um, these tumors. Okay, so how how do we how do we treat these these cancers? Well, the majority of the, uh, the majority of these um, tumors or cancers are referred, at least to my practice, after the gallbladder has been removed. Um, occasionally. The CAT scan will show suspicion of more than stones, but of a mass. And um, I recently saw a patient uh, where the surgeon actually was a student. The general surgeon was a student enough not to take the gallbladder out, thinking that there might be a cancer. Um, so we will be able to do this operation in, in, in one stage. But the majority of times, the gallbladder has been removed. And if if this ca if the cancer ends up being a um, a, a T1 uh, cancer. We, we usually just leave leave it alone and the treatment is col just cholecystectomy. Um, if, however, uh, the lesion is T2 to T4 to T3, even to T4, the operation changes. Um, so after the gallbladder has been removed, um, so we usually have a stage because the gallbladder has been removed, uh, the pathologist has looked at it. Um, so once again, if it's a T1 or just confined to the mucosa, we'll, we won't uh, get, offer the patient anything more than just uh, observation. Um, probably get a CAT scan every three months in the first year, just looking to make sure there's no evidence of uh, recurrent disease. Um, these categories, and it's usually the T2, T3 actually, T4 may or may not be operable. Um, the the operation that we perform is actually is removal of segments four five of the liver, which is basically um, taking a, a large chunk of the liver in common with a portal lymph node dissection. So along this common bile duct there are a series of lymphatics and what we do is we completely skeletonize and and clean up all this the lymph nodes along the hepatic artery along the common bile duct and the portal vein um, if the cystic duct margin this is a different scenario if the cystic duct margin however in the and it was not a high tumor, but let's say this was a cancer that was here, or a cancer that was not here and, and there was lymphatic spread. If the cystic duct margin, which is the on the specimen, is positive, or if there's evidence of cancer here, um, many surgeons actually advocate resecting the common bile duct with remove, in, in conjunction with removing all the lymphatics. And sometimes it's an easier operation to actually remove the common duct um, because the lymphatics will come up uh, with it. In that situation, 
um, this this biliary system has to be reconstructed. So we're talking about the situation where um, where the, the biliary system has to be reconstructed, and I've shown this on previous videos. Um, so it's a segment four or five resection of the liver, basically, or uh, a large glorified wedge resection with reconstruction. Uh, and this is a loop of bowel. And once again, we do what's called a Roux Y uh, hepatica jejunostomy. Now, situations. with gallbladder cancer like Klatskin tumors, um, if there actually is direct invasion of the liver, and typically if it's less than a few centimeters, let's say less than three centimeters, um, and the patients can tolerate it, a formal right hepatic lobectomy can be performed where you actually remove the right lobe of the liver to get clearance of the, uh, of the cancer. But the majority of the times, if it's operable, usually a 4-5 or five resection uh, can be done. A lot of times, as patients have had cholecystectomy, and the omentum uh, is, is stuck to the, to the gallbladder fossa, and sometimes the portion of the omentum needs to be removed. Um, mo most uh, surgeons also advocate removing, uh, doing elliptical excisions around the port sites of the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Um, if the gallbladder wasn't placed in a bag, um, these, t these cancers tend to seed the abdominal wall um, readily. So elliptical excisions of the port tracts are also an, important for surgeons re-exploring. Uh, re um, so in summary, gallbladder cancers are um, relatively rare, only 2% of all cancers. Um, they are a more common form of biliary tract cancers. Uh, the, min the minority of patients are actually treatable by operation uh, because the majority of times patients have had metastatic disease and or locally advanced disease that's inoperable. Uh, the standard operation is removal of a portion of the liver with the lymph nodes around the common bile duct. For more information, uh, please feel free to visit my website, www.liverandpancreascancer.com.